Finally, we come down to the last drug here in the other drug classes. And this class itself is called as glycopeptides. The class itself is called as glycopeptides. Now guys, just look at this class. And looking at this class, glycopeptides, what does come to your mind? What comes to your mind looking at this class? That these are small molecules or these are large molecules? What do you think? Think for a while. Just by looking at this class. What are these? These are peptides. And now think, what are peptides? Large molecules or small molecules? Obviously, peptides are large molecules. So guys, looking at these, one thing we can find out that these are large molecules with a size more than 1500 Daltons. These are large molecules with size more than 1500 Daltons. Now looking at this particular information that these are large molecules, we can find out two things. Number one, route of administration. Guys, remember, for a drug to be absorbed by oral route, the drug must have a size less than 200 deltons, lesser than 200 deltons, and it has a size more than 1500 deltons, which means what? Because of this huge size, this drug has poor oral absorption, which means what? For systemic uses, we cannot use it by oral route, so poor oral absorption. From this huge size, we can even make a guess on the spectrum. See how. I already told you regarding this, that guys, in case of a gram-negative organism, in case of a gram-negative organism, we have a cell membrane and then we have a cell wall. We have a cell membrane, cell wall, and then we have small holes called as porins. These are nothing but these are your porins. And to enter through this, as I discussed, two things are required. To enter into a gram-negative organism, two things are required from the side of antibiotic. A small size as well as water solubility. Vancomycin, the problem arises here. The problem arises here that vancomycin, the glycopeptides, glycopeptides, they have a huge size. These are huge molecules. So glycopeptides, they have a huge size as I discussed. And this is the reason why glycopeptides cannot enter into gram-negative organisms. So just by looking at their size, you can understand why glycopeptides not, they are not active against gram-negative organisms because of the large size, they cannot enter through these porins, which means what? This gives us about the spectrum as well. The spectrum of glycopeptides is limited only to gram-positive organisms. So guys, looking at glycopeptides, we can find out two things. Glycopeptides, proteins are large molecules because of which they have poor oral absorption, number one. Number two, because of huge size, they cannot enter into gram negatives and hence their spectrum is limited only to gram positive, as simple as that. Now coming to drugs here, the first drug that I'm going to discuss here is vancomycin. The first drug that I'm going to discuss here is vancomycin. And guys, vancomycin for systemic uses. It is given by intravenous route because I told you that it has a poor oral absorption. So as intravenous vancomycin is drug of choice for treatment of one I've already discussed. MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, and it is drug of choice for Enterococcus fascium. Because I told you, Ficalis 
Enterococcus faecalis drug of choice is ampicillin. Ampicillin, but fascium is universally resistant to ampicillin and hence vancomycin is drug of choice. It is also drug of choice for treatment of ampicillin. Ampicillin resistant is also drug of choice for treatment of ampicillin resistant enterococcus faecalis so guys is drug of choice for mrsa is drug of choice for enterococcus fascium and for ampicillin resistant enterococcus faecalis so this enterococcus is sort of getting complicated isn't it let's try to simplify it let's take some take some space here and let's try to understand the treatment of enterococcus so as we discussed enterococcus two strains of enterococcus faecalis and fascium all right now just recall what did I say was the drug of choice for faecalis ampicillin fascium it is vancomycin because fascium is resistant to ampicillin now in this case if the patient is not responding if the patient is not responding to ampicillin then what did I say in this case our drug of choice becomes In this case, our drug of choice becomes vancomycin. And finally, in both these cases, if the patient is not responding to vancomycin, then that is what we call as VRE or vancomycin resistant enterococcus. And for this, the current drug of choice is linezolid. The current drug of choice is linezolid. So this is guys what I've done here is I've tried to simplify. I've tried to simplify the treatment of enterococcus fascium as well as picanus. Let's go back to vancomycin. Intravenous vancomycin is drug of choice for MRSA, enterococcus fascium as well as ampicillin resistant enterococcus faecalis. Intravenous for systemic infection. Vancomycin it has poor absorption and still we can give it by oral route and it is understandable only for treatment of infections of gastrointestinal tract isn't it oral route oral vancomycin is used for treatment of pseudomembranous enterocolitis as here Let's have a look at treatment of pseudomembranous enterocolitis. Again, for your exams, treatment of pseudomembranous enterocolitis is a very, very important topic. Now, guys, how do you treat pseudomembranous enterocolitis? First of all, there are two important classes of drugs here FDA approved and non fda approved whenever a drug is not fda approved still used that use is called as off label use now just mind it whenever i say the drug is not approved by fda it does not mean that fda has rejected approval of that drug it just means that the company which makes that drug has not filed with fda for that particular use it has filed for other uses now that most important FDA approved drug here is oral vancomycin whereas non FDA approved drug is metronidazole. So the company which makes metronidazole it has filed with FDA for other conditions like GRDSs, trichomoniasis etc but not for pseudomembranous enterocolitis 
Now, out of these two drugs, the drug of choice for pseudomembranous enterocolitis overall is metronidazole. For pseudomembranous enterocolitis, drug of choice. Non FDA approved drugs can be the drug of choice, is the drug of choice. Whereas oral vancomycin it is the best drug, still it is not the drug of choice overall. The reason being it is very costly, it is very costly. But since it is best drug, it is drug of choice in severe cases. So in a severe case of pseudomembranous enterocolitis, metronidazole is not effective. And for that, we can use vancomycin because it is the best drug available in the market for treatment of pseudomembranous enterocolitis. So we reserve it only for treatment of severe cases because it is very costly. So where you, we use it when the benefit is more as compared to the cost. <clears throat> if, if the patient is not responding, to vancomycin then it is called as vancomycin resistance so guys in case of vancomycin resistance what are the other drugs we have in option fidoxamycin it is also an FDA approved drug Others are not FDA approved like rifaximin. For treatment, we can also use rifaximin. We can use intravenous immunoglobulin IVIG against Clostridium difficile can be used for treatment. So these are other options used for treatment of vancomycin resistance in pseudomembranous enterocolitis. So these are other things that can be used. All right, apart from so I said. Pseudomembranous enterocolitis is an important topic. That is why I'm going into details of how to treat it when our patient comes to you. Now guys, so this, these are the uses of vancomycin which I discussed. These are systemic uses by intravenous route. These are local uses which is seen by when you give it by oral route for pseudomembranous enterocolitis. Finally, I would come down to the side effects of vancomycin side effects of vancomycin as vancomycin number one it can release histamine vancomycin can release histamine and as all of you know histamine is a vasodilator and because of vasodilatation it can cause flushing because of release in histamine it can cause flushing and this flushing will give red red discoloration of the patient this red color appearance of this patient is classically known as Redman syndrome. So in your exams, they ask you, a patient was started on an antibiotic after which there was red discoloration of the face and which of the following drug the patient might have been started on? Your answer is vancomycin. This is called as Redman syndrome. Apart from this, vancomycin can also cause nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity so these are three side effects that's worth remembering with vancomycin finally guys let's have a look at some other other glycopeptides other glycopeptides here we have drugs like tacoplanin, dalbavansin, oritavansin is the latest one, recently approved is oritavansin and telavansin. Tacoplanin, Dalbavansin, Oritavansin, Telavansin. Now guys, these drugs, they have some common uses, which I'll discuss in a short while. Before that, let me have a look at some of 
the important properties of this drug. Dalbavancin overall is the longest acting glycopeptide out of all these drugs. It is the longest acting, even longer acting than vancomycin. Telavancin, it has maximum affinity Talavancin has maximum affinity for D-alanin. It has maximum affinity for D-alanin as well as it binds to cell membrane. It binds to cell membrane of the bacteria. and depolarizes the cell membrane. It binds to the cell membrane and depolarizes it. This is the reason why I can say that this is most active of all the glycopeptides. It is most active glycopeptide. Now finally, we would come down to the uses and these have common uses. All these drugs in this class, they have common uses. These drugs, they are used for treatment of MRSA. And as of now, they are FDA approved only for MRSA infection of the skin and soft tissue. They are approved for treatment of MRSA infection of the skin and soft tissue. These are only glycopeptides which are approved, whereas for systemic infections, the only glycopeptide which is FDA approved is the first one, that is vancomycin. So, as this is all.